Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Troman, Professor of Medicine and Pediatrics at Rush University Medical Center. I'm pleased to provide you with a brief synopsis of current concepts in the management of cardiogenic shock. Myocardial infarction with left ventricular failure is the most common etiology of cardiogenic shock. However, any acute cause of severe left ventricular or right ventricular dysfunction may lead to cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock is life-threatening with mortality rates ranging from 40 to 50 percent. Nevertheless, prompt aggressive treatment can result in full recovery. Let's begin by talking about management of cardiogenic shock without mechanical complications of acute myocardial infarction. When cardiogenic shock complicates an acute MI, the treatment of choice is emergent revascularization via fibrinolysis, fibrinolysis plus percutaneous intervention, percutaneous intervention alone, or through cardiac surgery. Medical and mechanical management should be considered as primarily adjunctive therapy to stabilize the patient to facilitate revascularization. Therapy generally begins with a vasopressor. Although dopamine is frequently chosen before norepinephrine, there is some evidence to suggest the latter is less arrhythmogenic and is a better first option. Unfortunately, use of inotropic support may increase myocardial oxygen consumption, result in arrhythmogenesis, or decrease splanchnic and renal blood flow. Mechanical options for drug refractory cardiogenic shock have included intraortic balloon pump counterpulsation, percutaneous LV assist devices, and extracorporeal membrane oxy oxygenation, commonly known as ECMO. Temporary left ventricular pacing analogous to cardiac resynchronization therapy may be useful in patients with refractory cardiogenic shock, left bundle branch block type QRS morphologies, and asynchronous left ventricular contraction. Coronary sinus venography pr provides a precise roadmap of cardiac venous anatomy. In this case, a 4.7 French quadrupolar lead is advanced over a 0.14 inch guide wire and positioned in an anterolateral cardiac vein. Right ventricular infarction, most often due to proximal occlusion of the right coronary artery, complicates about one-third of inferior ST elevation MIs and is associated with a higher mortality risk. Treatment includes maintaining RV preload, reducing RV afterload, inotropic support when needed, and again, immediate reperfusion. Restoration of atrioventricular synchrony or cardioversion from atrial fibrillation may also be required. Most mechanical complications of myocardial infarction, such as acute mitral regurgitation, ventricular septal rupture, or free wall rupture, occur in the first 24 hours. The remainder present within the first week. Management of cardiogenic shock from mechanical complications primarily involves emergent surgical intervention. Mortality rates range from 20 to nearly 90 percent, depending on the type of complication. Along the same line, acute thoracic aortic dissection involving the ascending aorta should be evaluated for emergent surgical repair. Without surgical correction, acute severe aortic regurgitation commonly results in life-threatening cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock may result from accumulation of fluid under pressure in the pericardial space. This, of course, is known as cardiac tamponade. Pericardial synthesis is life-saving. Surgical pericardiectomy, often referred to as a window, is an alternative approach to fluid evacuation. Acute massive pulmonary embolism is characterized by sustained hypotension, systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeters mercury for at least 15 minutes, or requiring inotropic support. Revascularization is key to therapeutic success. European guidelines recommend thrombolysis as first-line therapy and consider massive pulmonary embolism a class one indication for surgical pulmonary embolectomy when thrombolysis is absolutely contraindicated or has failed. American guidelines are more conservative and consider massive pulmonary embolism a class two indication for thrombolysis and surgical embolectomy. Takasubo cardiomyopathy is characterized by reversible left ventricular apical ballooning 
and the absence of obstructive coronary artery disease. Resolution of left ventricular dysfunction prior to hospital discharge is typical. Although transient inotropic support may be required, frank cardiogenic shock is rare. To summarize and review, cardiogenic shock remains a difficult clinical entity, often associated with a grim prognosis. Prompt recognition is pivotal because timely therapy may result in complete or near complete functional recovery. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I hope you enjoy the, reading the complete review of current concepts in the management of cardiogenic shock.